<laughs> oh, I just got a ray of sunshine on my face. <laughs> that feels so good. <laughs> the sun's golden rays are oh. warming my ass. <laughs> I've never felt a button in my hand that had such appeal to me. <laughs> so we are in the walled citadel of Konkana, which has got a varied history from tuna to fights. Grand, isn't it? Very grand. That sound you can hear in the background, if you can hear it, is actually our fan heater because we're going further north now and it's definitely, definitely getting cooler. I thought you were going to say it's Nick munching. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Nick munching. Yeah. Bit of a cold morning, a bit grey and cool, but the sun's meant to come out and today we are going to Konkanu, which is... We have actually been there before and it's an amazing place. It's so cool. But the thing I want to draw to your attention. Okay, so you guys can't feel for yourself this baguette. And I don't think that I have the vocabulary to describe. Superlatives. Yeah, how amazing this feels. It is like, it's warm, it's soft. I can feel the crispy exterior. I'm just so excited about this. Nick went down to the bakery this morning and uh, and got some some food. So, oh god, that that feels. I don't think I've ever felt a better baguette in my life. I've never felt a button in my hand that had such appeal to me. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> but more immediately, this is our breakfast, and it's um, a pastry filled with raisins. Does this one have custard in it? Yes, babe. And custard. Mm, nice. So, what's our plan for today? Um, as mentioned, we're off to Conk Hanna. We're just waiting for the uh, cloud to lift a little bit. Mm, we have 18 miles to the point, and then probably another five or six. So, we've got about 25 miles. Yeah, well, I think it's five, six hours. Well, you want to get, yeah, you want to get around the point before the winds turn west. The so winds are going to be strong. Julien said that it was there were strong winds around there yesterday when he did it. There's always strong winds in the afternoon. Yeah, so as usual, we have no wind this morning, and then in the afternoon, the winds will um, fill in from the west, and of course we're going west, so we don't really have much choice but to do what will, I'm sure, be a motor sail, motor sail this morning, and then get in before uh, the winds turn around. But we might get a point of sail this afternoon, depending on the timing. Fingers crossed. We're here, and we're going to go here. That's about the wind now. So we've got about six knots from the northeast. And then as the morning progresses, we lose the wind completely. And then in the afternoon, early afternoon, it starts filling from the west and just gets progressively stronger from the west before dying off overnight. And that's what happens almost every single day. Ultimately, well, ultimately we need to go back to the UK, but more immediately we need to get through this um, race here. But I'll talk to you more about that in another episode. That's a bit of a uh, major consideration when it comes to navigating around these waters. So we'll talk about that later. But for now, Konkanu. Can't wait. You okay, babe? Yep. Bows off. Merci bien. Okay, go to the nose and tell me when I can swing. All right, I think you're good.
could have just opened it and had that fresh buttery port yesterday. Oh, well, you could do. Do you want some with your no, tea? No. I'll make you some lovely baguette no. with tea. No, thank you. No, so I didn't offer it. But honestly, I mean, how the French they so slim? Butter. They have the best bread in the world and the best butter in the world. How the French say so slim is one of the great mysteries of the universe as far as I'm concerned. Fact. You know, the processed food that you eat and the cornstarch syrup and all the kind of preservatives and antioxidants, not the, you know, preservatives and colourings that the French don't have because they just eat, like, stuff from a literary source. And they all live to their 90s and smoke like f***ing chimneys and drink perno and dance and sing in their 80s. And literally, their quality of life seems so much higher than everyone else. God, it is icy cold this morning. That sun is supposed to be out in half an hour, <laughs> according to the forecast. It's definitely trying to brighten up and I can't wait for that sun to come through because um, it's really cold this morning. A lot of my puppy jacket and my cup of tea, my new thermal mug. What are you doing? Oh. What are you doing? Washing the, washing the lights. I'm chosen right now to wash the lights. Are you going to make it all wet? Yeah, well, I want it soft. Too much salt in this line. Oh, it's got a ray of sunshine on my back. That feels so good. It's trying to clear up. It's trying to brighten up. I reckon within an hour, bright sunshine. Oh my child, I know you hurt and you can't let go. It's not your fault and you don't deserve. How's the bread? Quite good. I could eat this whole loaf. I am having fromage fray with blueberries. Anyone who's not had fromage fray before, it is... What is it? It's like cheese? It's like... Soft white cheese. It's soft white cheese, which sounds kind of gross, but it tastes more like cream. I know you've done your part. It's not fair. You did your time. How much longer will you suffer in this life? Where's the sun, eh? It'll burn off. You can feel it's gonna burn off. Your side is grey. Yes, that's age. And my side is blue. <laughs> Sun's definitely trying to come out. It's so close. Almost there. We've got blue sky on this side. Grey sky over there, but I reckon give it another 10 15 minutes and it'll be blue sky everywhere. That's my prediction. Oh, I just got a ray of sunshine on my face. <laughs> that feels so good. How beautiful! How utterly beautiful. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, burn off, bitch. <laughs> oh. Wow. oh! Does that feel nice? Oh yeah, it's warming my ass up. The sun's golden rays so oh. warming my ass. This is like what I expected for today. Birds. Oh, look at that little one. Oh. Oh. He got separated. Birds of a feather stick together. <laughs> <laughs> Delta, there's C. 
still in Konkano and we are going to head out oh I forgot my shoes one day Nick's been waiting for me for several minutes now I really don't think I take that long to get ready look at the view from our boat that is the walled citadel which I'll show you later it is so so beautiful in there anyway this morning we are heading um, to have some breakfast first because we've run out of food and as of today it is mandatory in France to wear a mask inside. So, have you got your mask? Yes, Sherry, yes, port the mask. Yes. So, we're going to go and find a little cafe and uh, have a little coffee and croissant or something. And cafe then. and viennoiserie. Exactly. What are we going to do that after that? Well, I think we'll go and show everyone the, the beautiful town. citadel. And then we've got some boat chores to do. Yeah. Some naughty, naughty person cracked our boat and didn't tell us. Yeah, we found like a massive. Um, Not a massive, don't exaggerate, it's a small chip out of the... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise, <laughs> like, there was a no exaggerating rule on this channel. Did you come from England? Yes. Where did you come? Uh, we come, well, we come from London, but we haven't been back to London in five years. Oh, there we are. <laughs> oh, I'm just intrigued to know. <laughs> what were we saying? saying? You never exaggerate. <laughs> no, I do exaggerate, I exaggerate like... Like Billio, but no, this is like I don't know. It's it's an it, it it's an it will sand out. Yes. It's definitely going to be filled. It's going to be sanded. But I'm just kind of I'm pissed that Pete, someone's cracked yeah. the boat and not stopped and said actually we we took a lump out your tow rail. Well, I know where it happened. It would have happened in Belle Isle. There was so much <clears> going on in that little lump uh, with those mooring boys or people cracking other boats left, right, and centre. It's dishonest though. It annoys me. I know. I know. But anyway, it's, it's done now, <clears> and we're here in Concarneau. We're about to go and have a lovely breakfast. Yes. Oh, I know why you're feeling. No, I've eaten. I had breakfast. No, you did. I had a sandwich. I, on the other hand, haven't had anything, so well, I'm looking did. forward to it. Yes, exactly. Maybe I didn't need another breakfast. Yeah, I think you need a second breakfast. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for our coffees to arrive. I'm going to start my croissant because I'm hungry. Nick's just on the phone to Guernsey Marina. We're trying to do a bit of passage planning from a quick internet search. It looks like Guernsey, Guernsey, Aldney, Herm and Sark will require you to self-isolate on arrival for 14 days, which is obviously not very practical. Yeah, 14 days is a long time to be like sitting, sitting in a marina, self-isolating when we're kind of, you know, up against the clock anyway. So Jersey will let us in with a test. We have to do a COVID test on arrival, which is totally fine. I don't mind. But the rest of the Channel Islands uh, require self-isolation for 14 days. So Nick's just calling the marina now just to confirm that and work out whether if we do go, we're allowed to self-isolate on the boat or whether we're allowed to just like anchor somewhere overnight, not get off the boat and then carry on the next day because in terms of passage planning, we really want to get up to ideally Alderney to do the jump across the English Channel because otherwise we're looking at about 100 miles. So, we'll see. What are they saying? That's changed our plans. Yeah? Uh, they don't want us there. Not a personal thing. <laughs> They're just saying we advise we don't, want, we don't want anyone coming into Guernsey. Really? They said if it's an emergency, we'll let you in. If you can give 24 hours notice, and I'm like, well, it's difficult to give 24 hours notice of an emergency. Mm -hmm. But I said, look, you know, the, the emergency is not, it would be something like, you know, we're shorthanded. Mm -hmm. If the wind blow, if the weather blows up and we're just like facing, you know, just being, just wanting to just stop someone for a few hours sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, that to me is looking after the crew, which is a, anyway. Uh, so we're going to go to Jersey. Or gun it to Cherbourg and jump from Cherbourg. Yeah, that's a real bummer. Anyway, let's leave that for another day. I'm going to eat my croissant. Usually we wouldn't be planning a passage across the English Channel when we hadn't even left South Brittany yet, but during these COVID times it was necessary to think ahead. However, for today there wasn't much else we could do except enjoy the beautiful town of Concarneau in the summer sunshine. Merci, madame, pour la dégustation. Merci, madame, pour la dégustation. 
French towns almost always have markets, generally on certain days of the week. The markets always sell fresh fruit and vegetables, cheeses, breads and pastries, and there's sometimes hot takeaway food as well. This outdoor market took place next to the indoor market, which was open every day, and sold even more produce, including seafood, fresh meat, wine, yet more cheese and bread, and local delicacies. Mm. Bonjour. Hello, Eva gets Merci. This is by far our favourite way of not only doing our shopping, as it's much more convivial, it allows us to practice our French and we're supporting the local economy, but it's a fun way to soak in the atmosphere of a new place too. So we're just climbing up to have a look at the, uh, what, the ramparts, I guess, or the fortifications. Yeah. This is like a little museum. I think the green kind of green polka dots can ruin the general effect. It's not a fashion statement, it's, it's a safety thing. That's right. So we are in the, whew, the walled citadel of Concarneau, which has got a varied history from tuna to fights <laughs> to battles. So yeah, this is it's pretty amazing. As all these kind of like French citadels are, we've seen a few. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, it's just kind of like real centerpiece to the city. Mm. And, you know, I suppose the thing is that, you know, because they've got such a long history and there's still there's so many of these buildings that are still standing on I mean, these kind of fortifications, it's kind of like it's living history. You just walk around it and you can see, you know, we saw a lintel the other day from 1616 just on someone's house. It's nuts. Mm. It's like 400, 400 plus years. Mm. Insane. And they just live in there. Grand, isn't it? Very fun. I think the rather saying of all the places we've ever sailed uh, anywhere, including all of Brittany, it's the one thing where you're passage planning has got to be like bang on. Hi! Hi! You just keep on like motoring through dolphin pods. I don't think we've ever seen so many dolphins in one day. 